This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. And welcome back to the Exxon, everyone. My name is Rob, Mc- Rob McConnell. This is the Exxon Radio Network, Exxon Broadcast Network, UK High Definition Radio, Euro High Definition Radio, and Star Cable, 1-800-610-7035 is toll-free. Email exxon at exxonradiotv.com. On MSN Messenger, TV at hotmail.com. And our website, www.exxonradiotv.com. Exxon Nation, my very special guest this hour is Dr. Bernard Heisch. We're going to be talking about his new book, The Purpose Guided Universe. Believing in Einstein, Darwin, and God, published by the good people at New Page Books. And um, we're going to be talking about, well, believing in God and science. Now, he is a, a prominent astrophysicist, editor, and author. We're going to be talking to Dr. Heisch uh, about his new book. And he bases his recent discoveries on the numerous coincidences and fine-tunings of the laws of nature that seem extraordinarily unlikely, thereby calling for a more rational concept of God. Now, he advocates the serious scientific study of phenomena outside the traditional scope of science, reconciling modern scientific belief with traditional and religious beliefs. Dr. Heche was the scientific editor of the Astrophysical Journal and deputy director of the Center for Extreme Ultraviolet Astrophysics at UC Berkeley. He was also a visiting scientist at the Max Planck Institute for Extraterrestrial Psychic in Germany and editor-in-chief on the Journal of Scientific Exploration. And Dr. Bernard Heisch, welcome back to the Exxon. Nice talking to you, sir. Congratulations on another great book. Thank you very much. It's fun to be here today. Tell me, um, what is new in your purpose-guided universe compared to your former book, The God Theory? It's a continuation, actually. It's a sequel to it. The, the things that are different about it are that in this new book, I go much more deeply into the fine-tunings of the laws of nature that uh, seem to me to be conducive to life. Mm-hmm. I talk about the perennial philosophy, which is a summary of the esoteric beliefs that are common to all religions, especially as summarized by Aldous Huxley. I give several examples of mystical experiences that people have had. Uh, in one case, a mystical experience that the, the, the uh, perceiver then later on compared to psychedelic experiences and found they were not the same at all. And then lastly, I go into much more detail about the uh, role of consciousness in quantum measurements. All right, Dr. Heisch, please stand by. You and I have to uh, take a commercial break. We'll be back in two minutes. Once again, Exonation, our very special guest this hour is Dr. Bernard Heisch. We're talking about his brand new book that's just out from the good people at New Page in Warwick. The Purpose Guided Universe, Believing in Einstein, Darwin, and God. He's also the best-selling author of The God Theory. We'll be back on the other side of this two-minute commercial break as the Exxon continues from our studios in beautiful Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, on the Talkstar Radio Network, Exxon Broadcast Network, UK High Definition Radio, Euro High Definition Radio, and Star Cable. If you'd like to get a copy of The Purpose Guided Universe, Believing in Einstein, Darwin, and God, visit www.warwickassociates.net. 
I'll be back on the other side of this break as we continue with Dr. Hayes right here in the Exxon. Don't go away. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine like hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining room can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you're visiting, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic Felsmere, or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, old Florida cuisine at its best. Are you interested in the paranormal, ghosts, UFOs, or psychic phenomenon? Join me, Tim Bartley, co-host of Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, coming mid-January 2017 to the XZBN. We will channel spirits live and talk to them, revealing all kinds of amazing information. Spiritual attachments will be found and removed on the show, and so much more. To find out when you can listen to Talking to Spirits with Lightworkers Tim and Justina, visit www.xzbn.net for listeners on both sides of the veil. Ah, welcome back, Exonation. Dr. Bernard Heisch is my special guest this hour. He is uh, the author of a brand new book that's just out, and it, it, this is a definite for your for your uh, library at home, Exonation. It's entitled The Purpose Guided Universe, Believing in Einstein, Darwin, and God. Dr. Heisch is also the direct uh, the author of The God Theory. Now, we've had... Um, we we've had Professor Peter Sturrock on the show before, and this is what a doctor, a Professor Sturrock, said about uh, this book: If you think science has nothing to do with God and vice versa, read this book, and you just might change your mind. For more information on Doctor Heisch, or if you'd like to order his book, go to www.thegodtheory.com. That's www.thegodtheory.com, or it's available at Amazon. Uh, Dr. Heisch, um, why do most scientists reject the idea of God? Well, there are a variety of reasons. Some of them are historical. After all, the relationship between science and mm-hmm. uh, religion has not always been a pleasant one, uh, especially in, from the 17th century onward. And um, I think another reason has to do with the psychology of being a scientist. You know, you, you sort of think, well, I have specialized knowledge. I have more in-depth understanding of what constitutes reality in the universe. And, and I'm pretty smart, and, you know, this other stuff, doesn't, that doesn't sound real. On top of which, there's a problem that religions, unfortunately, contradict each other. And so if you're going to take them seriously, you have a problem. Who's right? Well, they can't all be right. They obviously disagree with each other, so something's wrong there. So that's a variety of reasons that cause a scientist to say, let's keep this at arm's length and let's not worry about it. Tell me, Doctor, is, is the God you're proposing at odds with science? No, not at all. That's, in fact, the reason I wrote the two books, to show that you can accept the fundamentals of science, the, the, for example, the... 13.7 billion year old Big Bang, mm-hmm. uh, an ancient Earth, Darwinian evolution. These things are sort of the keystones of the modern scientific perspective, and I believe they're 100% compatible with a view of God. But the idea is you have to change the nature of God. You have to you have to have a more sophisticated view of God than we're used to thinking of. Doctor, what are some of the just right constants in astrophysics that makes the universe capable of sustaining life? Right. There are 10 critical properties of the universe. There may be more, but at least 10 so far have turned up, mm-hmm. uh, which I discuss in some detail in the book. And I'll just give you a short list of them, not to sure. go into any detail, but we can, we can if you want to. Uh, the ratio of the gravitational to the electrical force, mm-hmm. the strength of the nuclear force that powers the stars, the average density of matter in the universe, the ratio of ordinary matter to dark matter, the uh, not-too-large strength of dark energy, quantum clumpiness in the moments after the Big Bang, just right conditions for the formation of carbon and oxygen, some unusual properties of water compared to other liquids, 
uh, the fact that the neutron is slightly heavier than the proton, and a very minute imbalance of matter over antimatter. Now, it's all very technical, but all these things together, for all we know, could have been very, very different. For example, if the, um, if the nuclear force had been only 20% stronger or weaker, mm-hmm. we probably wouldn't have the kind of universe that has stars and planets that reduces the life. So these things could have been very different, yet they, they conspire to make the universe a life-friendly place, in my opinion. It almost seems as if there was a divine plan involved. It does kind of look that way. Now, there are two ways to look at this. The conventional view is, well, if this is the case, if Mm -hmm. our universe appears special, it just means that we are part of an ensemble of many, many universes. There may be even an infinite number of universes, which are all different from each other. Of course, the one we're in is the one that's just right for us. It's no no surprise, so there's no need to invoke any intelligence. It's all just a matter of statistics. Right. The opposite perspective, which I take, is that, well, if it looks like it's been cleverly engineered so as to lead to life mm-hmm. and evolution, it's probably because there was an intelligence behind it. And then I ask the question, well, what could that intelligence want to do with the universe? And we can discuss that, too. What is multiverse theory in astrophysics? Well, that's what I was just alluding to, the idea that if our universe appears to be special, okay. and of course we don't really want it to be special because that kind of goes contrary to the scientific thinking, then we have to invoke lots of other universes. So we assume that there may be, in one of the uh, books on string theory, the number cited is 10 to the 500th power universes. That's one followed by 500 zeros. If we have that many universes, there'll be some likelihood that a universe like ours will, will just by chance be, be here. And then, of course, if that's the case, then we will arise as life forms in it, evolve in it, and we'll ask, well, what's so special about this universe? Why, why are we special? And we wouldn't be, because we would just be part of a huge statistical ensemble of other universes. Tell me, Doctor, is it possible to have spirituality without religion, in your opinion? Well, I think so. In fact, I think that's a good thing to strive for, because spirituality, in my view, refers to our true nature as spiritual beings. I think we're spiritual beings. On the other hand, religion, mm-hmm. religions are institutions, and they're institutions that have had not a particularly peaceful history with respect to each other. They certainly caused a lot of uh, harm and hardship and warfare, a lot of very crazy ideas in religions, things that you wouldn't make any sense otherwise. And so I think the idea of spirituality and religion uh, are very different, and one, one of them makes a lot of sense to me, and the other one seems to be a source of considerable conflict and problem. As an eminent scientist, sir, what are the biggest problems that you see with organized religion? Well, the biggest problem I see is that the uh, organized religions tend to oppose each other. They, each one claims to be the, the sole source of knowledge, mm-hmm. and the requirements are that you believe in the dogmas of your, your church, and by definition then you are excluding the dogmas of other churches. And so there's a built-in conflict there. I recall when I was a kid, when I was maybe 11 or 12 years old, and even starting the seminary and become a Catholic priest and all that, I was very scrupulous. And one day I found myself at a friend's house having dinner, and I was eating a hot dog, mm-hmm. enjoying a hot dog, and I realized all at once, about halfway through the hot dog, oh my God, it's Friday. Uh-oh. Now, I was a Catholic kid, and back then, you couldn't eat meat on Friday. That's right. According to my church back then, eating that hot dog might cost me my immortal soul, might cause me to spend an infinite amount of time in hell for eating that hot dog. Now, that's totally, totally crazy. And that's the sort of stuff that you find in religions. Now, you find some good things, too. Certainly. But you also find some pure insanity. Another example would be, in the Middle East, you look at the two different sects of Islam. Mm-hmm. The Sunnis hate the Shiites, the Shiites hate the Sunnis. It's the same religion. It's crazy. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it certainly is. Um, plus, how many people have died in the name of religion throughout history? It makes no I sense. Wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't want to dare to yeah. venture a guess, but I'm sure it's a, it's a horrible number. It certainly is. It certainly is. Um, um, tell me, tell me. Does, does consciousness actually create reality, or does reality require consciousness to exist? Well, this is where my views are somewhat heretical, because I, I tend to think that it's consciousness that's primary, that's the source of everything. Now, I'm not, I'm not alone in thinking that. Mm-hmm. Um, some, very other, some other very prominent people that certainly knew a lot about science thought the same thing. For example, Max Planck wrote that there are realities existing quite apart from our sense perceptions. And Sir Arthur Eddington and Sir James Jeans, very prominent astrophysicists of the last century, both had mystical viewpoints. In fact, um, Sir James Jeans wrote that it begins to look like the universe, or the universe begins to look more like a great thought than like a great machine. Now, what I'm finding, and what other scientists are finding too, is that in quantum mechanics, 
it's becoming very, very evident that consciousness is primary. The consciousness creates the reality that we observe. And if that's true at the quantum level, then it's got to extrapolate up to the larger scale too. So I think there's growing evidence that consciousness is primary, not the other way around. Where do you think the concept of God actually originated from, uh, Dr. Hayes? Huh, that's, that's a good question. I don't think I've ever covered that in either of my books. I don't know the answer anyway. But um, I'm just asking you for, for your own opinion, sir. Yes. I think the idea of God originated because I think basically all of us and all living things in the universe are God made manifest. Mm -hmm. I think God is manifesting, exercising his creative power through all the living things in the universe. So I think it's kind of a collective memory that we have, a memory that, well, really fundamentally, our spiritual nature is the same as God's. And so we are not just uh, children of God, we are actually connected to God. And it's that memory, I think, that, is, that we're finding is the basis of the, the, uh, the views on God that we've had throughout history and the religions that have arisen as a, result, as a result of that. I wonder how different history and the Bible would have been written if those who wrote these books had the knowledge that we have today. For example, if you, sir, were able to go into a, a time machine back to the time when all the, all the biblical events were being written as an astrophysicist and scientist, I, I wonder how different the Bible would have been written. Yeah, it would have been a different book, surely. And yeah. I think that uh, the Bible is certainly a product of its time. If you look at it, it's, it's not a particularly pleasant book. If you look at some of the things that are in the Bible, there's some very awful things that are attributed to God. Now, recently I read a book by Sam Harris, the prominent atheist. Yes. It was called The um, Letter to a Christian Nation. And when I started reading that book, I thought, well, I'll probably hate this book because it's very much anti, anti-Christianity, anti mm -hmm. anti-Bible. But I found myself cheering time after time as, as Sam Harris gave, gave examples from the Bible of things that were simply not credible in terms of coming from a real God. Things like a, a command in Deuteronomy that if a husband finds that his wife is not a virgin on their wedding night, he's supposed to take her back to her father's house and stone her to death on his father's doorstep, on her father's doorstep. Now, if that were really God, if that nutcase were really God that decreed that, right. I would be an atheist too. But I just don't, do not believe that there's any kind of God that would decree such a thing. And so that gives you some, some insight into the origins of the Bible yeah. and the problems with it. You know, just just like uh, Noah's Ark, destroying all life on this planet, except for those occupants within the Ark and the animals within the Ark. Then the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Then the de the death of all the Egyptians in the Red Sea. It makes no sense. This is not the act of a father. This is the act of a barbarian. And, and you know what? It goes against what I believe. Exactly. I would call such a god a sociopath. Exactly. Something not worthy of my worship or respect. Doctor, you and I have to take a commercial break. Thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us tonight here on the Exxon. You're always a welcomed visitor. And uh, once again, congratulations on another great book. Thank you. Exxon Nation, Dr. Bernard Heisch is going to be back with me on the other side of this news break. The name of his new book is The Purpose Guided Universe, Believing in Einstein, Darwin, and God. If you'd like uh, to get a copy of this book, if you'd like more information on our guest, visit his website, www.thegodtheory.com. That's www.thegodtheory.com. And don't forget, you can get your edition of the May X Chronicles newspaper. All you have to do is send me an email to exxon at exxonradiotv.com. We'll send you a link where you can read it online, download it, print it. You can download it onto any one of 16 mobile devices, all with the compliments of our advertisers. Once again, just send an email to exxon at exxonradiotv.com and say, Hey, Rob, can you send me a link to the X Chronicles newspaper? We'll get it to you right away with the compliments of all the advertisers that we have in this month's edition of the X Chronicles. Dr. Bernard Heisch and I will be back on the other side of this commercial break as the X Zone continues from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. This is the X Zone Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. 
For more information on the X Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the x Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. Welcome back to the Exxon. 1-800-610-7035 is worldwide toll-free email. Exxon at exxonradiotv.com. On MSN Messenger, TV at hotmail.com. And our website, www.exxonradiotv.com. Don't forget, if you'd like to get your complimentary link to the May uh, 2010 edition of the X Chronicles newspaper, just send an email to Exxon at Exxon Radio TV and ask us for a link. We'll send it to you with the compliments of our advertisers. My guest this hour is Dr. Bernard Haish, and we're talking about uh, the new book that he has out entitled The Purpose Guided Universe, Believing in Einstein, Darwin, and God. Dr. Haish is also the author of The God Theory. His website is www.thegodtheory.com. And and I have to ask you at this time, uh, Dr., in your opinion, is religion a good or a bad thing for mankind? Well, it's certainly been a mixed thing. Now, on what side is the balance? I tend to think it's been overall more negative than positive because of the, the vast divisions between the religions, because of the, the slaughters and the wars that have taken place in the name of religion. Mm-hmm. So I would not be, I would not be uh, disappointed to see religion sort of vanish in the coming century. But that's not to say that uh, we would take a perspective that ignores spirituality, because I think we are basically spiritual beings. And I think perhaps freed of the, the middleman, the questionable middleman of religion, we might be in a better position to evaluate our own spirituality for ourselves. What do you believe, sir, are the biggest problems with present-day organized religion? Well, it's the, again, the conflicts between religions, the fact that they can't all be right. They obviously must be wrong in many respects because they contradict each other. Yeah. The fact that they... Uh, uh, disparage each other, that they have even, lead, have even led to wars uh, between different factions. It's the, the violence and the intolerance that go along with many religions, and all of them, of course. Many of them are good, yeah. but there's too much very, too much neg- negativity in many of them. You know, that, that leads to another question. Why are there so many different religions? A very good question. I think it has to do more with culture and with politics and economics than with anything that's truly of uh, cosmic or spiritual significance. I think religions arise because of reasons that may have very little to do with actual spiritual knowledge or truth, but rather because of the, the sort of cultural, economic, and political reasons that cause the rising of countries. As an astrophysicist and scientist, sir, does quantum mechanics have anything to say about consciousness? Well, it has a great deal to say about that, actually, because, as it turns out, measurements at the quantum level completely depend upon a conscious observer to complete them. Um, for example, an atom is, is both a wave and a particle. In fact, everything is both a wave and a particle. Let's take something very small like an atom. Its wave properties are called the wave function. Now, as a wave, it can be spread out over two boxes. You can have the, the two parts of a wave function that constitute an atom spread out over two boxes. Experiments confirm this. In fact, a physics news item from a few years ago carried the headline, 3,600 atoms in two places at once which sounds crazy, but in fact, that's what you can do with a wave function, because that's, waves tend to spread out. But if you look in one of those boxes, your looking will either cause an atom to appear or not appear in that box. And so the, the looking of the observer creates the outcome, which is which box is that wave function making an atom be in? Well, it depends upon what you find when you look. It's the look that makes the reality happen. And even, uh, even some of the great scientists that developed quantum theory years ago 
had the view that the, the realm of the atom was something that was rather abstract until it was measured. It's not really, in a sense, it's not really there until you look at it. Hmm. What is quantum entanglement? I've heard this phrase before, and I was just wondering if you could explain it to me. Yeah, it's the, the taking an experiment to create, say, two particles. And these particles could be bundles of light, they call them two photons, that have correlated properties. So, for example, if one spins up, the other spins down. If one spins down, the other spins up. They're correlated with each other. Now, you can create pairs like this that spin in some arbitrary direction, and you don't know what the, that, that direction is, but you send them off in their opposite directions, and you measure one of them, you'll find that amazingly, no matter what direction that you think it may have started out at, if you choose to measure whether its spin is up or down in the north direction, mm -hmm. it'll be either up or down. You measure that. Well, that's, that's curious enough because we didn't send it in the north direction to begin with, but somehow it knew when it got to our measuring apparatus, gee, it had to line either up or down. Well, the other interesting thing is that its partner is going to instantly know somehow what the first photon did. And if the first photon winds up spinning up in the north direction, the other one will wind up spinning in the south direction. And they can't communicate with each other. It just They're entangled somehow in that they, they have to have opposite properties, but those properties aren't even determined until after they, they've separated from each other beyond any possibility of communication. Has there ever become a has there ever been a time where you have a problem separating yourself as a astrophysicist and as a person? Uh, not really as an astrophysicist and as a person. I, I tend to think of myself that way sort of all the time. It's perhaps a little more difficult to consider myself constantly as a spiritual being because after all we live here in this right. physical environment and and it's tough, you know, there are ups and downs and at times you really believe that there is there's a uh, divine order behind things, and other times it looks like it's total chaos. So it's a little more difficult on that side, actually, than on the astrophysics side. Is there a purpose for the universe? Yeah, I think there really is. And I think it's this. I think that there is a great intelligence behind the universe. And I think this great intelligence, maybe even an infinite intelligence for all I know, has infinite potential, infinite ability. But ability and experience are two very different things. It's sort of like dreaming up a, a new board game, dreaming up a new version of Monopoly. If you write the rule book, that's kind of fun, but it's a lot more fun to play the game. So what I think happens is that this great intelligence dreams up a universe like ours, maybe many other universes. And then uh, in those universes, lets the laws of nature create life forms. And let those life forms evolve according to the laws of Darwinian evolution. And then that, that, that great consciousness enters into those life forms and experiences what it's like to exist in that way, to exist in the physical universe. And that's God doing that, and I think God does that in every life form that exists here in our universe, including us, including all the plants and animals on the planet, including all the, the alien civilizations elsewhere in the universe. So it is, is it your opinion that there is a purpose for each and every one of our lives? I think there is, and I think that purpose is to give God potential so that God can experience what it's like for his or her I use the term his, her, because yes. there's no gender associated with God. Might as well call it its, I suppose. But whatever this great intelligence is, wants to experience its potential. And it does that by creating at least our universe, and thereby experiencing what life is like in a physical form through all of us creatures that live here. So basically, uh, it would seem that we are... Uh, puppets? No, not puppets, no. but we're... We're being used by God's for for his or her own pleasure? No, not at all. No, that's, that's the wrong way to see it, because I think we are basically God experiencing okay. this. It's not God using us, it's, it's God being us. It's sort of like, um, if you can remember your, 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 some experience from the time you were a kid, you somehow still have retained in your memory banks mm -hmm. what you did maybe 30, 40 years ago, whatever, yep. whatever time that was. You're not in some way stealing the memories somehow vicariously living through them, the experience of that child. You were that child at one time. And so the memory belongs to you, and it, it's quite legitimate for you to, to get happy or sad over it. And I think in the same way, it's not God that somehow uses us. Mm -hmm. It's God that is us. And we just don't know that. And the reason we don't know that is because if we did know that, it would take away some of the spontaneity and novel aspects of life. Can we look at ourselves as being computers sending back information to the mainframe? Well, I suppose you could. I mean, that's, yeah, I suppose you could do that. I mean, I think that loses some of the essence of it, but you could think of it that way. So how can you be so sure, Doctor, of the God theory? Huh. Well, I can't be. 
I mean, I'm, I'm 99% certain, based upon just my own intuitions and what I know about science, what I know mm-hmm. about religions and so on, that this, to me, makes the most sense. It makes far more sense than concepts of heaven or hell or concepts of a God who demands to slaughter the enemies or other sort of sociopathic things, yeah. or, things we talked about earlier. This, to me, this is logical. It's, it's rational. Now, I don't reject the possibility that it could all be that our universe is one of many, many others. It's all an accident. That's legitimate. It's rational. And uh, I don't uh, disparage anybody who believes that. But I, myself, just don't think that that's the... It's, it's, a, it's a judgment call. Do you think there will ever be a time when science and spirituality can actually be bridged? I think there has to be, because ultimately, if we are spiritual beings, and there are laws that go along with that, there are laws and powers and, and consciousness that goes along with that, and it really is the basis of our real, reality, in my view. And so ultimately, we will have to come to a reconciliation between them, because they're, they're in a sense, both true. What we know about science is true. It works. The fact that I'm able to talk to you today on the radio certainly validates the science behind mm-hmm. telecommunications. And uh, the, the fact of our spiritual nature, I think, will become evident by and by. And I think that we can't possibly continue to ignore one truth or the other. They both have to come together, because if they're both true, that's, all, that's the world and the reality we live in. So they have to somehow be reconciled. Undoubtedly, sir, these are very exciting times we're living in. We're learning at a rate that our this civilization or, or this entire planet has never been able to learn before. Information is instantaneous. Um, with with taking all that into consideration, is physics today facing a crisis? I think it is. This was discussed in a couple of books by practicing physicists. Uh, Lee Smolin from the Perman Institute in Canada wrote a book about this. And um, another book was written by a, um, a mathematician at the Columbia University talking about the, uh, sort of the end of physics because physics is now totally wrapped up in string theory and membrane theory, which are theories that are very, very complex mathematically, but at this time have no possibility of any kind of proof. And uh, unless the Large Hadron Collider at CERN, which is now back in operation, discovers some new exciting particle, such as the Higgs particle or something else, uh, physics is up kind, of, up kind of up against a, a dead end. And I think that uh, is evident also in the, the emphasis we're finding today on biology. I think biology is the, going to be the premier science of this coming century. And biology is a very different kind of science than, than physics is. But that's where the money and the interest and the resources are going largely. And so I think that physics is, it may be in trouble in terms of fundamental discovery, in terms of its prestige and the, sort of the, the, the queen of the sciences. Hmm. Speaking about biology, uh, do you accept the Darwinian evolution theory? Oh, yes, definitely. In fact, I think it's essential. From my perspective, the purpose of God seeking life experience through us implies that he, he did not manufacture things. He didn't, like Santa in some workshop, manufacture creatures to roam the planet. I think the Darwinian evolution is the way that the laws of nature create the novelty and the newness and the, uh, the originality that God seeks. So I think that God seeks novel and unique experiences and leaves it up to the universe he created to bring those about through the laws of Darwinian evolution. As a scientist, astrophysicist, author, and, and human, when looking at the Bible, the book of Revelations, do you think that the world will come to an end as depicted in the book of Revelations, the apocalypse, or do you think that this was just a way of bringing the book to an end? That's just a way of bringing the book to the end. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. What would you like people to to walk away with after reading your book, Doctor? Well, what I'm trying to do is to present a rational view of religion, not religion so much as spirituality and science, that can be accepted by the, the millions of people who are smart enough to understand that there's a lot of truth in science, but... Mm-hmm are put off by the scientists who say, well, there can be no God, no spirituality. They, you know, tend to say, well, okay, if, if scientists say that, maybe I shouldn't believe in anything. And they're also too smart to be put off by, or too smart to buy into the, the claims of the fundamental uh, fundamentalists who claim to have all, sources of all knowledge and whose, whose views oftentimes contradict each other. So there are millions of people who are sort of in the, in the middle between the science and the fundamentalist aspects of, of our culture who would like to find something that makes it plausible to, to believe in a God, to, have, to say, yes, my purpose in life is to have an experience that will somehow live on in the mind of God because it is God's experience. 
And it's, it's that audience I'm looking for, the, the ones that really want, want more but are put off by the scientists telling them, no, they can't be, or the simplistic solutions about heaven and hell that are offered by, by many religions. Sounds like you're a bit of a maverick within the scientific community, sir. I guess I am. I guess I am. Dr. Heisch, please stand by. You and I have to take our final break for this hour. Exxon Nation, our special guest this hour is Dr. Bernard Heisch. His um, book is entitled The Purpose Guided Universe and uh, Believing in Einstein, Darwin, and God. It's available at his website, www.thegodtheory.com. That's www.thegodtheory.com. I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break. As we wrap up this hour with Dr. Bernard Heisch, and once again, the name of his book is The Purpose Guided Universe, Believing in Einstein, Darwin, and God. And uh, he is also the best-selling author of The God Theory. The website, once again, is www.thegodtheory.com, and his books are available at Amazon. We'll be back on the other side of this commercial break as we continue from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, on the Talkstar Radio Network, Exxon Broadcast Network, UK High Definition Radio, Euro High Definition Radio, and on Star Cable. Don't go away. Hi, I'm Larry Lawson, host of Paranormal Stakeout. With over 36 years in law enforcement, I have learned a few things. The most important is the proper gathering and preservation of evidence is vital to putting the bad guy behind bars. It's no different in the world of paranormal investigation, whether it's the search for the afterlife, cryptozoology, UFOs, and extraterrestrials. How we gather the evidence, preserve that evidence, and present it to a jury of our peers will make the ultimate difference in proving the existence of worlds and entities that are beyond our imagination. Join me, Larry Lawson, every week on Paranormal Stakeout when, along with my guests, we'll take a journey to prove with indisputable evidence what man has struggled to believe for centuries. Go to xzbn.net for the broadcast schedule and check me out at paranormalstakeout.com. True healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, Soul Balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A Soul Balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www soulbalancing.world You're listening to the X-Zone Broadcast Network www.xzbn.net The name of the book is The Purpose Guided Universe Believing in Einstein, Darwin and God The author is our special guest this hour, Dr. Bernard Heisch, and he's also the best-selling author of The God Theory. His website is www.thegodtheory.com. And, uh, Doctor, I was wondering if you could answer this off-the-wall question. Are angels and miracles real? Where do do they fit in in the the big picture? Well, it's interesting that in modern string theory, um, you need additional dimensions to make the mathematics work out. And in mm-hmm. those additional dimensions, there may be other universes. So uh, these other universes with very different physical laws than ours, probably, who knows, it could be popula- populated by other intelligences. Why not? That's pretty much accepted as a possibility in physics. Now, what's the difference between an alien in one of those universes and an angel? The answer is, I don't know, but it looks to me like more a question of semantics than of reality. So uh, yeah. could an angel and an alien and a, a string theory or M-theory universe be the same thing? Could be, could well be. Well, maybe the... miracles. Um, I think that uh, we, I think in a sense we create miracles because if our consciousness is the basis of reality, then our thoughts and our desires and our wishes and our fears do somehow help to shape the, the reality that we live in. And so, uh, with, a, with a certain caution, I say, well, miracles, yes, maybe. 
I've always believed that the aliens of today were the angels of yesteryear. Could well be. Could yeah. well be. You know, because the people who wrote the Bible really didn't have very much worldly knowledge as we have today. And as I said, you know, how would the Bible be written if those people way back when had the ability and the knowledge that we all possess today? Um, once again, I'd, I'd like to thank you so much for joining us uh, today. It's always a great pleasure talking to you. Continued success. Let our listeners know where they can find you on the Internet and once again how they can get a copy of your book. I'll just go to www.thegodtheory.com. And you can find the links to the book there. Or just go to Amazon or probably just go to your favorite bookstore. It should be in all bookstores by now. And if it's not, tell them to get a copy of it. Uh, what's next for you, Doctor? That's a very good question. I've got a third book in me. You know, I didn't think I'd have a, I'd have a second one when I finished the first one, but I did. So maybe uh, luck. Well, maybe, maybe with luck it'll be a third book. But I don't know at this point. I'm kind of resting from, resting from the efforts I've created, too. Well, you take care of yourself once again. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Continued success, and I look forward to the next time when you and I meet back here in the Exxon. Thank you. Good night, Doctor. Dr. Bye. Bernard Heisch has been my guest this hour, Exxon Nation. He is the author of The Purpose Guided Universe, Believing in Einstein, Darwin, and God. He's also the uh, author of the best-selling book, The God Theory. His website is www thegodtheory.com that's www.thegodtheory.com I'll be back on the other side of this commercial break with the news with Lynn Wallace as the Exxon continues we're right here from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada on the Talkstar Radio Network Exxon Broadcast Network UK High Definition Radio Euro High Definition Radio and on Star Cable don't go away, we'll be back right after this news break Music 